And good morning. It is 7.30 and joining us in studio this morning from the Chavez County Federated Republican Women, Margaret Kennard back with us. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Doing great. How about yourself? Doing well. Good, good, good. So, uh, well, we're getting, we're, we're like, we're like less than a month away yeah. from, from the election. It's hard to believe that, but um, I'm glad because, you know, with the season of, you know, you can't get through a, a commercial break without oh, 37 yeah. political ads right now. Right. I'll be ready for that to go away. But, yes. uh, but yeah, it's uh, early voting's actually started. It's we're, we're in the, the final, we're the final the approach yeah. of, uh, of this election here. Um, for folks that aren't familiar, the Chavez County Federated Republican Women, uh, they, they actually meet once a month. The, the, is it third Wednesday? It is the third Wednesday. Third Wednesday. I always get the Wednesdays Look, we mixed have up. you trained up. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough to do. And uh, <laughs> I'm hard to wrangle. But uh, <laughs> but for the uh, the third Wednesday month, they meet uh, at the convention center. And and for the last uh, several months, and will for this uh, up through the election, uh, have been, been uh, showcasing and spotlighting various uh, state, county, uh, even national level candidates. Uh, that are up for election here and, and getting op- folks opportunities to come and hear these individuals speak and, and ask questions and talk to them before you, you go to the polls to vote here, uh, well, beginning now. So uh, we would love to, before you go vote, at least come out to the next uh, meeting here next Wednesday and, and hear the lineup for, for this next one. Yes, and so this coming this next week we have um, our uh, state judicial candidates so we have um, Thomas Montoya, who is running for um, Supreme Court. Okay. Um, we have Barbara Johnson, who's running for Court of Appeals. Okay. And we have uh, Gertrude Lee, who is running for uh, the Appeals Court as well. Okay. These And so these, this is one of those ones that's probably really good to go, because let's face it, you know, we probably, we all do a lot of research for, for you know, Congress people, Senate people, uh, commissioners, you know, things like that. But when it comes to judges and things, you're kind of, you know, there's not a, it's, 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 it's the least political political spot in the, in in generally these elected positions, but, but really it's, it's where you, these are, these are skill sets. I'm not saying to run for Congress, you don't need skill sets, but, but positions like judge, those are specialized skills. Not everyone can be a judge. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, where I'm not saying you're not, anyone can be a, a Congress, a member of Congress or something, but, but at the same time, you know. Yeah, it, there are qualifications yeah. you have to meet. Like and, if you have no knowledge of the law, it's really hard for you to be a judge. Yeah. Just, <laughs> and, and these are, you know, very important positions mm-hmm. because um, everything you know, runs through sure. our, our legal system. Sure. And obviously your family with your dad and everybody, I mean, y- y'all know about judges and things like yeah. that. So you understand why it's important to, to research and understand, you know, what, what, what judges, what positions, because to be honest, it's, it's, it, their political opinion shouldn't matter that much. What, what, what really matters when it comes to judges is do, how do they interpret the law and do they interpret the law properly? And, and at the end of the day, that's their job. Their job's not to get involved in which sides the you know the you know politically which side the one that you need to listen to and like no what does the law say and how do I apply it and that's what a judge does so yeah you know, that's why we say it's the least political political position there is well and you know we had an appointed Supreme Court um, justice who I, I'm trying to remember his name now but he was out of Hobbs okay and he, I believe he was appointed by Susana Martinez several years ago and it and you know he obviously. I uh, didn't get um, he he didn't get voted for at election yeah. because he was appointed to fill a position and then so but one of the things that he he said was um, that he brought diversity to the Supreme Court in that he was from rural New Mexico. Um, oftentimes you find on the Supreme Court are justices who live in the I gotcha. metro area or Santa Fe area. They don't understand the way of life in the rural parts. They right. know the city parts. Mm-hmm. So so they're not necessarily experts on how things work in rural parts of the country. Yes. Gotcha. So, um, and, and having said that, then you kind of know what, what the Supreme Court of New Mexico is made up of um, politically. Gotcha. You know, because uh, 
it kind of is like here in southeast New Mexico, we're conservative, whereas up north in those metropolitan areas, you have um, more, you know, Democrats representing. So um, that was pretty interesting and stuck with me. Um, you know, seeing the difference. Yeah. Gotcha. Whenever he, okay. he was, campaigning. which is a good point. Cause you know, from someone like me thinks of this way and you're like, you know, what point, you know, DR should matter when it comes to a judge. Mm-hmm. It's, here's the law. It's pretty black and white. Interpret it the way you're supposed to interpret it. You know what I mean? But, but I understand experience yeah. does come into play, especially on the sentencing side. You know, that's where they get the latitude is, you know, you know, what convicted, convicted sentences, are dictated based on that, but they do get a lot of latitude that they want to go to the more harsher side of the sentence or the more lenient side mm-hmm. of the sentence. And and that's where some of that might come into play a little bit is their mindset, their reasoning, what, you know, is, is this, does this person deserve punishment or does this person deserve uh, an, a wake-up call or a lesson learned right. here kind of moment? And, and that's where that ideology comes into play a little bit. Yeah. So. Interesting. So that's so, where you get to hear the judges yes. talk and things like and that. And so this is, I think it's something. So every election cycle, I've been involved with the Republican women for, um, I want to say, going on 10 years or so. And so this is one of the thing, one of the uh, one of the meetings that I really enjoy. Um, we also are going to be hearing from Giovanna Eisenberg. I think that's the correct way to say her name. But um, she comes down. She's been uh, involved in the judicial candidates campaigns nearly every year that I have been around. And um, kind of, uh, you know, there are things that judges can and can't say. So she's going to um, let us know what you can and can't ask a judge. Gotcha. Um, and kind of discuss. So judges, judicial candidates cannot ask for for uh, contributions. So that's one of the things that, and, but in order to run in a political campaign, you need you contributions. Need money, right. <laughs> so that's one of the things that she'll talk about and some other things. Um, I really enjoy listening to her talk um, and educating us about, you know, these types of things. Sure. Another, another thing, last month we had um, Cindy Fuller come on, uh, come and speak. Mm-hmm. And we also had Aunt Ch- Thornton. Chavis County clerk. Yes, a Chavis County clerk. And she, uh, Aunt Thornton was our other speaker. Mm-hmm. Lieutenant um, yeah. uh, Governor, Governor candidate. candidate yes. yes. And so anyway, but what she brought with her, and I think, um, you know, is important for everybody to know, she brought uh, a sample ballot. So if you don't have a sample ballot, you can go online and get a get your sample ballot mm-hmm. at, the, at the voter portal. And I, I Googled it last night just because um, I wanted to make sure I could tell everybody. But you just go in there and, and uh, you... I typed in SOS, Secretary of State, Mm -hmm. Voter Portal, New Mexico, and I was able to look and see who was going to be on my ballot. Okay. Um, And because a lot of times you hear, you know, you hear Mark Ronchetti is going to be on the ballot. You don't know about the judicial candidates. Sure. And most people, including myself, do not know that there's, you know, two or three uh, constitutional amendments. Um, Absolutely, yeah, and on, of course on the, the bonds as well, right. bond C D, and you know those the mm-hmm. ones that impact colleges and libraries and things like that. Um, yeah, and you need to know that information, and 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 not to mention with redistricting for the congressional districts. Uh, I hate to spoil this for me, but odds are you do not have the same representative representing you right now that you did in the last time you voted. Correct. Um, Almost everybody here was District 2 uh, b- before the, the redistricting. Now very few of us are in District 2 mm-hmm. anymore. You're either in 1 or 3 probably, right. depending on what part of town you live. I think unless you're in like the extreme parts of the county, like the Boot Hill, you're not in 2 anymore. I don't remember yeah, the Yeah, I'm in 3. Yeah. And, um, and I'm Alexis. in 1. Oh, you are? I'm in 1. Yeah. Cool. Because <laughs> I thought I was in 3, three. as well, uh-huh. and then it turned out I was in 1. I think. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's kind of confusing. So please go to that portal or con- reach out to the Chavez County clerk's office. They'll be happy to kind of navigate yes. you to that if you don't can't figure out how yeah. to do it. So helpful. Yeah. And um, there was something else I was going to mention to you. Oh, yeah. And we had uh, Dr. Powell and um, M.G. Grizzle at one of our previous, uh, I want to say two meetings ago, mm-hmm. who talked about the bond issue, and those are uh, no tax increase yeah. um, bonds. 
Yeah, please. Um, they cannot ask you to vote for it. I can. Yeah. I think you can, too. I did. <laughs> I, at our meeting, they said, we can't ask you. And I said, well, I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it is. a. It, it, please do not do not just ignore those. That's um, it, it does not generate any more tax dollars out of your pocket. These are bonds that they have to vote on every uh, was a year or two years. I don't mm-hmm. remember the, the cycle. And uh, it's just to to reassure that they're going to keep giving these money that the public is okay with giving these monies to, uh, I think bond C is the one for the colleges and mm-hmm. B for the libraries. I could be off on that, but I th- yes, you're right. I uh, think so. And so, uh, and so every year now the colleges, uh, here in, in Roswell, it is NMMI and ENMUR both benefit for every college in the state gets monies from these and they have them earmarked for projects. I think ENMUR, it's a lot more of a, some of the security lighting, that kind of, there's some, uh, some kind of uh, water management mm-hmm. or something they've got to do with it. So that money's getting put to there. Uh, NMMI, is, that money's going towards a remodel renovation of their dining facilities, which we every time we have a conversation about doing anything construction-related at NMMI, it almost takes an act of Congress because just about every building's out there is a historical landmark, right. which means there's certain techniques, certain oversights, certain everything mm-hmm. that's involved with that. So... Um, so they use that money to to really to upgrade a uh, facility, which is very nice, but it's 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 outdated for its usefulness. It needs to be modernized to meet the needs of NMMI today. Um, when you have old buildings and old historic things, sometimes they get uh, they get outgrown and and they're in their dining facilities that way now. So that's yeah. what that money's going for. So when you vote yes for that, that's what it's for. Right. And uh, same with the uh, the bond B, which is the libraries, the college libraries, your your school libraries, the Roswell and city libraries all benefit from that too. That's how they get more books and more materials and more programs uh, available to you for free of charge. So yes. please vote yes on all those. And you know. Uh, to have the New Mexico Military Institute in Roswell in uh, Eastern New Mexico University, Roswell, here, um, I benefited personally from, you know, going to ENMUR and uh, not having to make that drive to mm-hmm. Portales until I had to make the drive to Portales to finish my degree. But um, so many of our children and our adults, uh, you know, reap the benefits of having those facilities, the, you know, those institutions here. And so... Um, I think we really do need to support that. Yeah, and I uh, think I think as a whole, this part of the the state is usually pretty yeah. overwhelming supportive of those, and they usually pass. But but don't sleep on it, please. Well, make right. sure and, you, and, you, and, you and, do and it's it. not listed in there. Yeah, you know, on the ballot. So I, to some people forget to turn over ballots and, yes. and do things, or some people look at you know these questions and automatically ignore them. They're mm-hmm. very important. To be honest, sometimes those questions they ask on the back are if not is important, more important than some of the decisions you make on the front of that ballot. You right. know, it really does uh, have a big impact on this state and our, this community. So yeah, educate yourself. Before- yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. You know, every month we try and, and bring um, relevant issues uh, to our members. And, you know, <clears throat> anyone is invited to come. Um, we would love to have you. We'd also love you to, for you to become a member um, we are rounding out the uh, the membership year. We had 150 uh, members here in Chavez County, making us the largest club um, in the state okay. at that in uh, September. So nice. um, yeah, so it's we're in a pretty uh, steep competition with uh, Farmington. We are always at, at uh, it's a, a healthy a competition. One. Yeah, it's a friendly competition. <laughs> we like, want everybody to have lots of memories. Rumble at 12. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but anyway, uh, we do try to bring a, a relevant and educational meeting every month. We've had forums in the past. Uh, we'll probably continue to do that. Uh, in So let me tell you about what we're having for lunch. And I just have to brag on the uh, convention center uh, chefs. There are three new chefs. One is from Dallas, okay. Texas. One is from, um, I'm going to mess this up. I want to say uh, Louisiana or maybe, that I think. They, they like think Creole he's... country? Yes. All right. So, Cajun. Yes. And the other one, I'm not sure where she's from, but um, they are phenomenal. And for them to come 
here to Roswell. I'm not sure why. I'll have to ask them sometime why they came here. But uh, I think that... We abducted them. Yeah. But anyway, so if you're interested in attending next week, we are going to be having buttermilk fried chicken. Nice. Creamy garlic mashed potatoes, uh, green bean casserole, and iced lemon cake for dessert. And so um, our room sponsor for... Uh, this month is uh, Representative Greg Nybert. Okay. And um, so anyway, we uh, if you'd like to attend, you can reach us on the Facebook or we have a, um, an email for RSVP. And Come for the food and stay for the conversation. Exactly. <laughs> uh, RSVPCCFRW at gmail.com. Very good. And uh, um, yes, and do that sooner rather than later, later so they can get a head count. But uh, and by the way, if you want to come, but you're like, I, I, I can't, I, I'm on a diet. I can't eat delicious yeah. fried chicken. That's okay. You can come without having right. to order food. But if you're like, I'm, I'm ready to eat. Come and eat and uh, sit and listen and, and, and ask your questions afterwards, too. Right. By the way, to add more confusion, I, I did get a, a text saying that they, they have renamed the bonds to one, two, and three yes, instead of A, B, C. You that. <laughs> which. It, you know, in case they want to make things more convoluted. It's like, hey, in the middle, let's just go from letters to numbers, you know. Right. Because, you know, why not? <laughs> yep. So it's going to be the last bond on Somebody that. saving their job doing weird <laughs> stuff like that. We need to change them. Why? Because I have nothing else to do, and they're going to fire me if I don't do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to mention next month is going to be a very special month. Um, every year in November... Uh, at the Republican Women Luncheon, we honor veterans. So if you um, know of so, know of a veteran or your spouse or family members a veteran and you want to honor them, we are going to be doing that next month. Nice. Uh, give us, you know, contact us, um, and we can we can make sure that they are honored at that meeting. I'm sure uh, between our VFW and our American Legion posts, I'm sure there's a few... F- and we are in working the with are... uh, Big Lou at the American Legion oh, nice. to to pull this off to make sure that we good deal honor as many people yeah, he's as a good we dude. can. Yes, yeah, Louis, Louis, boy, he's been on a bunch of times. Too, Has he? Yeah. yeah, he's a real nice guy. He's my neighbor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So yeah. good deal. Yeah, he knows. He's a good resource for picking, yeah. spotting, and, and and rounding up some veterans. He he knows a few. So yeah, and he's been involved with schools of the school forever oh yeah so, yeah he's yeah yeah nice guy he so i met him when he ran and he was a guest at the republican women so that's how i met him oh okay several years ago when he ran for school board okay very so. cool well, yeah he's pretty active american legion and yeah and uh, still school and everything else too so yeah good for him um but don't forget put it on your calendars one week from today yes uh next wednesday at the roswell convention and civic center uh, about 11.30, right? It's when everything kind of gets underway. Yeah, you come about underway. 11.30. Yeah. Um, that'll give you some time to, uh, you know, talk to the candidates. Yeah. Either have, before or after. Have your nice uh, buttermilk fried chicken and, <laughs> and green bean casserole and uh, lemon cake and, oh, garlic mashed potatoes. Is that what they yes. I was like, I'm trying to remember everything. But you I was, got So this is like the... Uh, I guess they still do it on the radio, the lunch report in the morning. I don't know. I yeah, don't school, we haven't done one in a while. I probably need to get back to doing it. Yeah. I kind of got off, off the off the stick on that but because yeah. i because i have to go hunt it down and then i forget and then here we yeah. sit so well, I, I couldn't remember if you did it or i, I used to it but then I, it just kind of faded away and, <laughs> and then and then uh no one yelled at me so then it just kind of went the, that way so yeah i should bring it back though I, i'll i'll do that well people if you all want it tell me if not if you don't <laughs> care then i won't do it either yeah. so let me know if you want it and i'll i'll I will work on trying to remember to do that. Well, you got the Republican Women Lunch Report, so. There you go. Yeah. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. (laughs) Good deal. But, again, that's next Wednesday, one week from today. Yes. And then mark it on your calendars. They meet the third Wednesday of every month. And I know, um, you know, the November one probably, that will be the calm after the storm, that one. Yes. But but still, come out and meet. And because uh, there's still a lot of good information there, you know, when – when there's not direct election stuff, a lot of it they're working on scholarships and youth, and and so uh, it's busy the political cycle. But outside of that, they it's they they focus. I mean, obviously they're they're always working on Republican issues and things, but they kind of turn focus to more community minded uh, service right events. Well, and hopefully after the new year, if we have some new leadership up in Santa Fe, 
um, we'll be able to bring some of those speakers down, sure. you know, following the session Educate and stuff like and that. And, absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, we're always two years away from another big election. So. Right. <laughs> it's a never-ending vicious cycle. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> it is. Um, again, uh, give out the information if anybody has any questions, wants uh, to learn more, want, uh, to RSVP, any anything, or or if you're interested in becoming a member of the Chavez County Federated Republican Women now, you do not have to be just a woman. Right. You know, men are also allowed to be a part uh, as part of the kind of an auxiliary or uh, part of the, you know, the, the, the support group of yeah. the Chavez County Federated Republican yeah. Women. So men, women, they're all uh, invited to come be a part. Right. So the associ- uh, associates are for um, men, but they're also for anyone under 18. Okay. Um, and uh, or that might be a member of another club in New Mexico. Okay. So you you know, um, but anyway, <clears throat> so if you you can get us on Facebook, we're we're toying right now with the idea of making an Instagram, um, but uh, anyway, we are on Facebook, and like I said, you can RSVP to RSVP ccfrw at gmail dot com. Good deal. So. And then uh, and then come on out next Wednesday. Oh yeah. And, Join us. Uh, it'll be it'll be good. Yeah, absolutely. Come and ask questions and. Get more involved if you're interested in becoming a part of the organization. Be a lot of people you can talk to on Wednesday. Come, come hungry and come ready to listen and come ready to get involved. Yes, so, good deal. Did we get it all? I think so. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, ma'am. As always, Margaret, appreciate the visit. We'll uh, we'll see you guys next time and uh, and uh, keep busy. I know it's a uh, it's it's hot and heavy this next couple weeks. For, right. And by the way, if you're wanting to get more involved in in, in candidates, Republican candidates campaigns. Chavez County Federated Republican Women are very good at putting you in touch with those campaigns right. and things. So if you're saying, we, hey, I want to help <laughs> candidate X, yeah. they'll they'll be happy to, to get you in touch with the people right. you need to get in touch with. And just, uh, just to put it out there, the Republican Party of Chavez County um, is uh, working on some walking days for candidates okay. coming up. So. so be on the lookout for yes. that if you want to mm-hmm. get involved. Uh, they because... also have a Facebook page, the Republican Party of Chavez County. Very good. And that way you can... Uh, Sign up, get involved there, and, and meet and learn more resources and things to get involved, too. Yes. So, good deal. Well, thank you, ma'am. We'll see you, you. Uh, next time, all right? All right. Uh, Thanks, don't work, Mike. Don't work too hard. <laughs> uh, 